Yeah. <laughs> so he's going to feel passionately David's... about it one way or the other. David's getting to the point where he feels like he's going to need to start staking Coterie members and hiding them in his basement to keep them safe from themselves. He's not at that point yet, mind you, but he's... He's getting there. So yeah, Byron is just going to be kind of staring dumbfounded at David, and uh, I mean, Byron's kind of at a loss. So David's just going to kind of look at his phone, look at Byron, look back at his phone. Your phone is now and... diamonds. <laughs> then uh, look at then call up Joseph again. Uh, I'll see if I can call Marcus. See, I mean, maybe he'll pick up for me. And so, uh, Byron will call up Marcus. We'll handle Joseph first. Hello? Hey, um, I forgot to ask with all that, do you, uh, do you still think you're going to have time for the officer? Not in the next, probably not the next couple of nights. Um, I, I was going to ask you if you could see if she has like a, a, a three days where she's off, or well, three nights where she's off in a row. I, I don't, uh, you're the one that could get me the information on uh, what her schedule, I, I don't know how how difficult that would be. Well, no, Joseph would probably know about how difficult that would be. I have no clue. Uh, fuck, um, all right, I'll, I'll ask the detective if he can, uh, pass their schedules along. Yeah, I was, uh, acting stupid and irrationally before. I'm, uh, trying to make up for it. Uh, if you end up not having time for it, I can ghoul her and, uh, we can find you another, uh, cop. We, uh. I don't think that we can really have overkill when it comes to uh, story security. True, but uh, I don't know how much you, you, you get this, but um, just having a goal, even even that, that once a month, uh, it seems to add up after a while of, uh, of uh, time you need to spend and things like that. So there's, there's kind of an upper limit on the, the number of goals you can have. And um, I, I think that there's always something more that we need to be worrying about and we may need to ghoul someone else so just ghouling every cop in the city is not exactly uh an option that's fair i mostly just wanted to have the uh <sighs> the trinity of dispatcher beat cop and detective out of the way yeah um no i'll i'll, I'll do that you don't have to worry about that um if you can get me that information, if not, go ahead and tell me, and I'll do it on my own. Okay. Um, do you need me to uh, run down any leads on the Marcus situation? No, I, I think I've got that handled. Sure. Pretty sure. I'm uh, sure as I ever like to be find uh, once you're a little too sure of what happened, uh, you tend to be wrong. Alright. Click. And uh, Joseph will go back to what he was doing. Okay. Now the second important question. Does Marcus pick up the phone for Byron? Yes. There you go. Byron's cool. That's right. Is Marcus still in the club? He's still in the club, the music's open. In case Byron hears... <laughs> uh, Play that song later. again! Oh, well, it sounds like you're having fun. Um, uh, where are you at? I'm free I'm as free. a bird. What's up, Byron? Oh, now that I just... Uh, I mean, I've cleared up a few things with David here, and uh, I was just 
you know, wanted to blow off some steam. Uh, where are you? Oh, I'm at the club, man. Barely heard your ringer. Uh, which club? Is it the one we were at before or a different one? I don't know, man. I just walk into these places. I just think, uh, I, may I, think have, I, may have, uh, I may have left an earlier when I was a little bit more inebriated. So uh, uh, pick the nearest girl near uh, next to you and ask her what club you're in. Why are you asking, man? Well, I just want to, like I said, I want to uh, blow some steam. I would, I would come and say, hey, yeah, I haven't seen you in a while. I wonder what's up. This sounds okay. completely abnormal for Byron Rand to tell you. <laughs> uh, oh, I know. Okay? Are you, are you, are you, are you okay, okay, Byron? I mean, if you need to blow off some steam, don't you do it like with your ventral ways? Oh, I don't. Well, you've heard. I had. I've been having issues with my Venture buddies. You were there at the uh, Story of States earlier. I just figure I'd try a different scene for a night. You know, it's uh, varieties of spice of life and all of that. Um, and Let, yeah. Li Listen, Byron. I don't think this club is your scene. Let me be honest with you. Ah, oh, fair enough. No problem. I figure I'd ask. No biggie. Um, I just want to tell you, though, this Auspex thing is great. I've been playing with it, and uh, thanks a bunch for teaching it to me. Um, I'll talk You're to welcome. you welcome. You're welcome, man. You're welcome, man. Enjoy. All right, click. Uh, with that, uh, since that call, I'm sure took shorter time than uh, the one David's having. He'll wait for David to get off the phone, and... Then they'll say, well, um, Marcus is just out partying. So there you go. I, um. I'll see you later, Byron. <laughs> And David's just going to kind of walk away. Still with that shocked, stupefied look on his face. Byron, Byron has seen this look before. <laughs> the look where it's just like, whatever. <laughs> Fine, fuck it. Where did you guys think Marcus was? Well, I mean, uh, uh, I thought it was brought up that, uh, well, maybe, I don't know, I'm getting, I'm getting out of character and character information mixed up, I guess. Someone was looking for you, probably Joseph. Oh, yeah, uh, Joseph, I mean, Joseph was definitely looking for Mark. I didn't, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, Byron didn't know that was the case, but yeah, um, yeah, so, uh, but, uh, but yeah, he was just informing uh, David that no, he's not into trouble. He didn't seem upset at all. He was just out partying, doing frickin' Toreador crap. Frickin' Toreador crap, man. Yeah, uh, Byron, Byron's fine. He'll just say, all right, well, I'll just talk to him another day about this. It's, it's, he's very much on the cusp of not wanting to give a shit. It's just... He just does not want another problem to deal with right now. And so, yeah. Byron going, after, Byron going home. Byron's going home to throw a mallet at a wall for a while. Um, he's not even going to, I mean, he's going to do it half-heartedly. He's not even, I'm not even going to make a roll. He doesn't do anything. It, it No progress. And then he's going to go to bed. <laughs> okay, then we need to focus on David Green. What does David do after he parts ways with Byron? First, David is going to, uh, he's going to call up Detective Fonsworth, hope that he's still awake. You, uh, you reach him. He's like, uh, Fonsworth here. Hey, it's Green. Oh, the, uh, the voice perks of immediately, uh, yes sir, what can I do for you? I could really use the, uh, schedules of, uh, Officer Espada and uh, Dispatcher uh, Worthing for the next week, if you can get them. 
He scratches his head. I should be able to get them. But of course, you know, uh, being uh, in the service means that uh, you're on call whenever. Of course. I just want to know when they're scheduled uh, hours, and more importantly, their uh, scheduled breaks are. I should be able to get that. Uh... He takes a look at the clock. Later today, I guess, I'll uh, get in touch with a friend. I should be able to get him. All right, I'll uh, I'll stop by tonight to see if you have. All right then. Is there anything else, sir? No, uh, that's everything. And uh, sorry for disturbing you. Not a problem at all. Happy I could help. And uh, he hangs up. And uh. Then David's going to, uh, get started moving his shit from his current haven to his new one. Actually, you know what? David has a face now. He can rent a goddamn U-Haul. Goddamn right he can. This is fucking New York City metropolitan area. There will be people to help you move whenever the fuck you want. So yeah, he's gonna rent a U-Haul and start bringing his stuff to his new place. He would know that it's more conspicuous, a <laughs> U-Haul truck, but you know. <laughs> I mean, he'll park it a ways away, but seriously? Carrying a whole bunch of fucking cabinets and shit throughout the streets? <laughs> that, might, that might be just as much conspicuous, yeah. I think that might be a little bit more fucking conspicuous. <laughs> All right. Oh gee, why the fuck is he carrying a bunch of cabinets from the riverfront to a warehouse. He's he's probably a drug runner or something, surely. <laughs> we should say something to him. So yeah, he'll uh, load up a U-Haul with the essentials, move them to the warehouse, and uh, bring the U-Haul back to where it belongs and uh, sleep at the warehouse tonight. Today. Okay, uh, uh, Sean, how long's Joseph, uh, intending on, uh, on engaging in his current activity? Well, I'm going to say he's going to hold the items in his hands so that if he does capsize, he's, uh, not going to end up, uh, damaging them or anything else. And he's going to stay there for, uh, as long as it takes. Okay. In which case, uh, for as long as it takes, uh, Joseph's actually getting to a uh, territory where he's not going to make it back to his haven before the sun rises now. It's past oh, five. Yeah. It's past 520 in the morning. Was expecting that. which case uh, Joseph uh, realizes that uh, as strong as he might be, he's going to end up falling asleep here. With no sign of Marcus. Because Marcus Paulson, how long does he stay out before uh, he heads to his destination? When does the party stop? Well, uh, the party might stop for Marcus whenever... Uh, <laughs> Whenever he realizes he needs to take shelter before he incinerates. Yeah, and Marcus isn't exactly that drunk anymore. He'll probably leave the club around 30 minutes before sunrise. I like go the, to his destination. All right, I like the new description for the token, by the way. <laughs> and Marcus crashes at his... At another haven beyond the one that, uh, that, uh, his, is his new one. And the sun rises. Did you guys want to keep going with another day, or you want to stop for the session? We've gone over five and a half hours now. I'm fine with either. This seems like a natural stopping point, though. It could be. 
But we, we also know what's going to happen in the next 24 hours in game. Yeah, it's definitely a cliffhanger, which I like. So I'm, I'm, I'm game for either way. Yeah, I am too. Which is kind of an asshole statement. Every single one of us said the exact same thing. The exact same thing. Well, I'll, I'll elaborate. Um, it, if we go on more, it could take till uh, 10 o'clock or something. So does anyone object to going if, that if, late? If what, if what I think is going to happen is going to happen, it'll take us past 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Right. So I, well, I mean, stopping might be a good idea. It's kind of where I'm going with it. It might be, but as I said, I mean, I'm, my, my entire slate is clear for the evening. It's a decision on what you guys as players want to do. I'm just warning you right now that we've gone five and a half hours. It's all in. Seeing the current attitudes of the coterie, we might end up going another long while. Well, you know what? It's, uh, I'm going to say uh, I'm game for going to 11. If you have no objection, Grummet, I say let's do it. It's yeah, possible. I, I, I think Grimmett was also saying it could possibly even go longer. I don't I, know about no, but, that. I, I hope it one day doesn't take fucking four or five hours. <laughs> well, I, uh, Joseph has his way. Uh, what, what? No, I, I'd be happy with it ending very quickly. <laughs> I'd be happy with it ending with just one little action. <laughs> yes, yes, one little action. Yes, yes. So, so, so how are you feeling, Aaron? Oh, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, David is feeling um, horrified. All right, guys. Um, if in that case, uh, if if you want to take a, a break to energize, grab something to drink, you know, a sandwich or something, I'll go ahead and uh, grab a, a sugary beverage. Uh, we'll reconvene it about five or six minutes and. Fucking the party in Evelyn's car will keep going. <laughs> well, I'm loaded up on beverages, so I guess I'll go get some chips. Woo, party in Evelyn's car. Woo. Just to be sure, no, either which way, right? I mean, me as a player, no, I don't care. I, I have no hard feelings. Oh, well, if Marcus has hard feelings and bad, that, that's kind of the point. I mean, Mar I mean, Marcus just says that you know. Well, yeah, I know. I'm just saying, as a player, no hard feelings either which way. Yeah. But again, because telepathic, I... telepathic hacks, man. Telepathic hacks versus uh, Mister Invisible. Yeah, but uh, yeah. it is literally Mister, Mister, Mister Invisible is all good and all. You just can't. If you can't find, you can't find what you're fighting either. It's Shit! Liter... My dog heard the crinkling of the chip bag. He's coming for me. It's literally like a Nosferatu battle. We're, we're fighting in such a, or, or, well, not fighting yet. Um, we're doing this in such a way that, that would make David proud. A Nosferatu battle involves waiting for the other person to make the slightest fuck up and then uh, bring down holy hell on their heads. Yeah. Like, whoops, they accidentally uh, kicked that tin can. Time to rip them in half with potents. It's like a sniper battle, really. Oh, that's probably a... a, a in chat, there's probably a best question for you. Uh, you. Because I, I think... Yes. This I think it will change the hostility. It won't remove it, but it'll change it. With Joseph, I actually don't really think so. Not much. Not really. Change it. He's he's. No, not really. I can't see it affecting it much either way. I mean, unless like, David freaks out over it and tries to kill him, then yeah, it, it had an effect. It'll show David that uh, Joseph at least has clear intent of altruism. It means that. Uh... His uh, judgment will be suspect rather than his judgment and his motives. Woo, party! Basically, it will cause David to kind of lower in his eyes 
Joseph actions from uh, murder two to uh, aggravated manslaughter. And when you talk to Marcus, Marcus will say, saying, I didn't kill those people. If anything, I'm only illegal of uh, kidnapping and battery. And is that so wrong? Yes, but not quite as wrong. Here's also another thing. Marcus doesn't know what happened to him. They could still be alive. Yeah, so could pa ev so was everyone that Sevalon dealt with. Hey, right. we don't know. So for David, he'll uh, suddenly have the opposite opinion of Marcus that he does of uh, Joseph. Trusting his judgment, but not his motivations. Woo! Evelyn's car! And David and, is and an idealist, so motivations are important. Very important. And I, I think that your, uh, I think David's impression of Byron has stayed the same the entire time. Motivations might be okay, but everything he does is stupid. Yeah. How's that foot sandwich, Byron? Oh, that's delicious. Yeah, I'm just David's, so glad I remember. Yeah. I was just to say, I'm so glad I remembered I had an enchanting voice because I don't know what that box would have done, but I'm sure it would have been bad news. Apparently, according to Grimace, when he was making rolls for me, I was rolling like a god. Apparently. For for what? I don't know, but oh, I was oh, rolling oh. like a god, whatever it was. For for reading my mind or my Joseph's mind. mind. Oh, oh I mind. see, I see. Um, yeah, I was away. So if you're talking about that. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't Man, realize you my had dog that dog. fucking loves potato chips. I don't have telep I don't have you don't have telepathy, but you do have aspects and it helps you not be surprised. Yeah, I, I don't uh, I don't do, I haven't even read the aspects in this one. I I I think it's it, slightly it's different. It's basically from... like I, I, Yeah, it's weird things. Yeah, I, I I haven't read Am I breaking up? No. Nope. No, you're. No. Nope. Okay. I, I, everyone else was, so I assumed that it was my my fault. You guys can continue the conversation if you'd like. I just wanted to announce that I was back. That's all. No, I so, was just sort of telling. Oh, go ahead. When all this is over, David is probably going to find one of his coterie members to have suspect judgment one to have suspect motivations, and one to have suspect competence. I think that's fair, given what he's seen, honestly. Yeah. Now now that, that guilt burden is going to be resting on Aaron's shoulders, if only he hadn't lost control all the way back in January. Yeah, Joseph, Joseph looks at the three and says, Good? Or, well, is currently saying good, evil, dumb. <laughs> I hope I hope I'm the good one. I hope I'm the dumb one. That means no, I think that, that Byron is the Sabat member. <laughs> I, I mean, he's that... the only one who did anything to the snowman. So you know, obviously, it, it had to have been due to evil powers, right? Right. Yeah, and you only yeah. have his word on that because you two were out cold. So and Joseph had run away. <laughs> he he made a deal with the uh, snowman. That's how it is. Um, there you go. The deal being, I'm going to shoot you in the head, and you're going to do nothing about it. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, David would know uh, what's going on with the snowman, although he isn't going to be telling anyone. He can't tell anyone. Tell anyone. Right, exactly. You know, he, if he, he could, tried, he would. He, he tried the best he could, and the, the only person whose suspicions went off was Joseph, because both Marcus and Byron just thought that Dave was being a sarcastic asshole, which, you know... <laughs> valid. Okay! It's a valid interpretation. In that case, um... Day, uh... Day passes? And, uh, the sun sets. One question. What's up? Do I get a point of willpower for partying hard? At the end of the session. <laughs> okay, just, just asking. 
Yep. I, I definitely would think that what Marcus did was justified in living up his Bon Vivant status, but uh, if the session had ended, then uh, he'd totally have. <laughs> okay. On Monday, May 11th, 1998, David, Joseph, and Byron awaken like 10.05, 10.06, losing a point of Vitae in the process. Byron awakens in his haven. David awakens in his uh, new digs. Joseph awakens in a... Uh, you want to tell everyone or you just want to keep it secret? <laughs> he awakens where he is on the map. There he... <laughs> He awakens in Steinway? Oh, goodness. Yep. Joseph awakens uh, where he is on the map. Down to uh, five of ten in his blood pool, uh, still clutching his possessions. And he is alone. And probably fuming. The, uh, the plan, whatever, hadn't worked out. Of course, there are several possible interpretations from that as well. You know, Marcus, of course, could still be gone. Maybe something had been done to them by this guy that Match had directed you to. Maybe, maybe he somehow knows and he's fled the city. Or, you know, he's just fled his haven. Maybe he installed a security system somewhere and somehow saw you and said, fuck this shit. Maybe he's secretly Sabat. <laughs> Maybe he's Kane. He's really got her. Here, just a sec. I'll be right back. Yeah, um, Joseph's gonna head out, stick his items in trunk, and probably go feed. Okay, he's going to return to the church and then call up his herd? Yeah. <laughs> You're, are you, were you going to try not to? <laughs> I was thinking of doing it in Astoria so I could just stay around and, and, and be back in action quicker, but no, nope. Got to do this safely. Got to do this carefully. Because if Joseph wants to lose control of his shit without Craig or Rain there to hell while he's feeding us someone. <laughs> and he has possessions. Yeah. That would end... I don't know how that would end. That would end funny. Define funny. <laughs> well, it would end fun, as in capital F-U-N, as in from Door Fortress. Oh, okay. As okay. in D-O-R-F. So lava will win. Yeah, he, he finds lava on the source lava. block. All right. Joseph returns to uh, his haven and calls up, what, two, three members of your herd, hopefully? <laughs> yeah. We'll go with three. Okay. That, uh, that's pushing the boundaries of calling up at once, but Joseph is a nice guy. You know, platonic, he's great, you know. He's a, he's a sweet innocent, even though he puts, puts odd things in my neck. <laughs> it's totally cool. What would Byron like to do? Or what, rather, will Byron do? Yeah, those are very, two very different questions. I, I think uh, Byron wants to uh, be, well, anyway. Byron wants to be anywhere but here, but he doesn't know where else to go. So there he can. <laughs> he'll call up Marcus, and since I know he won't answer, he'll leave a message on the machine and say, uh, hey, when you get this, uh, drop me a line. We need to talk. Okay. You still away, Aaron? Probs. Okay, so we'll assume David Green goes about his uh, normal routine, being extra careful to uh, ensure that everything around is okay. In which case, uh, Marcus. Not like 1041, 1042. You awaken in, uh, what, do you want the uh, lo your location to be public or private? I'm at I'm where I am on the map. <laughs> You're in Steinway. <laughs> well, part of me is the other half isn't. Uh... Uh. Either way, really should get that reattached. <laughs> 
sleeping across neighborhood lines. All right, you awaken to your surroundings with your possessions. And among your possessions, of course, is your phone with a, uh, a message from Byron. I mean, apparently, you know, you must have missed that. It was about, like, half hour ago. It must be, uh... Ah, continuing to sleep in late, lavishing and loving life, Marcus Paulson. Well, I'll call Byron back. Because, you know, apparently Byron wanted to talk to you according to the voice message. It's gotta be important. Ring, ring, motherfucker. Byron will stop looking in the mirror long enough to uh, answer the phone. And uh, I don't know what you guys waiting. Uh, <laughs> but uh, say, oh yeah, Marcus, I, I talked to you last night. I don't know if you, if you remember. You seemed to be partying kind of hard last night. Yeah, I got my party on, man. Feel alive. Super. Like the first time in a long time. Really? What's changed? Did you get that whole ghost thing sorted out? I don't know, man. Just something feels like there's a weight off my shoulders. You yeah, know that feeling? I, I was... No. No, I don't. Actually, I've been getting more weight on my shoulders as the days go by uh, in this frickin' godforsaken town. I, I, moving on. Uh, um, so, uh, a curious thing happened. Uh, <clears throat> apparently, uh, Joseph came by, uh, uh, went by Evelyn's place and searched her car last night and... I don't know the gist of everything. All I know is that uh, I was with David at the time, and David and Joseph were talking, and I remember that <clears throat> remember that time that uh, Theo Bell uh, 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 just gave us that deadpan expression of surprise a while back. Just yeah, dumbfounded. One of it. That was the look on David's uh, face. Um, I just gotta really? ask. So what? So really? So what? So what did the crazy Malkavian say this time? I I'm not certain. Except, uh, uh, what exactly did you use F one's car for? Oh, you know, I went up and went up and saw that guy. You know, did you? Uh, You, you didn't go out partying or anything like that uh, in, in the middle of it then, did you? Uh, may have, I may have gone partying one time, and then sometimes I party really hard, man, you know. <laughs> Maybe a bit too much alcohol. I party hard, and sometimes the party out-parties me. Yeah, and, uh, well, anyway, uh, it just, uh, I, I guess there was evidence Listen, did I, like, someone mess up something in the car? Because if I did, I, I can pay for it. You you can. I mean, I, that's it, that totally yeah. derailed Byron. He's like, you have money. <laughs> uh, I, I thought just we just get... cleaned you out for Matt. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that's exactly what Byron. Let me, so let me sell some things. Maybe I if, if, like what happened to the car. If, like it was like, did I scratch it? Uh, no, apparently that I guess it. There may have been someone else in the car with you at some point or something. I guess that was the gist of it. I didn't hear all of it. I would just, uh, I'll come right out with it. If you use that car to uh, kidnap anyone and take them up to Yonkers, there, is that what you did with that car? Listen, Byron. I did some things with you. I did some things with Evelyn's car. But they were with the best of intentions. So what if some of them were what if some of them are considered illegal? We're fucking vampires, man. We don't exactly follow, you know, strict legal guidelines. So what? 
you did you just picked someone up off the street at random and t- took him not at to random a house. not at random not at random i made sure to get someone who was already breaking the law i'm cleaning the streets making a story a better place Uh, there's there's going to be silence uh, on his end. Uh, Byron is just going to be closing his eyes and uh, actually trying to breathe to calm himself down. You know, like you do. You know, take take short breaths or long whatever it is. Take a few breaths and go on. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what. I I I'll take your word for it that they were bad people. Uh, I I. You're just not using Evelyn's car again. You do, if this comes back somehow to implicate Evelyn, I, I uh, this. It's all on me, man. It's all on me. You have my word. It's not on Evelyn. You can say I stole Evelyn's car and all that shit, whatever. All right, I'm back now, and uh, I should not need to step away for the rest of the night. Okay, Aaron. No worries. No worries. Basically, to recap, uh, Byron just got Marcus to tell him that, yes, he kidnapped people and used Evelyn's car to take him up to Yonkers, uh, or wherever it is, North East. But they were only bad people, man. He's making Osoria a better place. Oh, yeah. Uh, for, for Byron's part, um, I mean, he's very much a right-winger death penalty type, and he's just like, yeah, take the scum off the tree, uh, street and shoot him in the head type of person. Um, you know, <laughs> he's just like, criminals are bad news, so he... Here's the thing. He's also, made... also, Marcus, uh, Marcus also mentioned that I didn't kill them and everything. I just knocked them out and took them up there. I don't know what the old guy does with them. Plays Twister with them. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't call David liberal. He, uh, but he tends much more towards uh, caring about due process and uh, giving everybody their day in court, if at all possible. Yeah. Uh, uh... Uh, Byron's more concerned about this ever coming back. Like, if someone saw, basically, he'll he'll say, say this to Mark. He's like, "Look, did anyone see you? I mean, I don't know how you did this, but apparently, you you must have knocked him out somehow and thrown him in the back of the car or the trunk or something." And that uh, I just, if anyone saw that and took down the license plate of that car, it's gonna get us all in hot water because Evelyn is the business manager for us. Um, from what Marcus would know, uh, he was very observant and careful about the process. He didn't have the car parked, you know, right where something was taking place. The only people who had any decent shot of seeing him at all would be the people whose lives he helped by uh, subduing these uh, these criminals, you know, and then just disappearing with them, saying, you know, I'm going to take them to the police station or I'll take care of this. Don't you worry, ma'am. And then walking away. Yep. I mean, it's not uh, a possibility that someone saw him do this, but they shouldn't, you know, associate him, you know, getting the mugger and then the car together. Yeah, just yet. Uh, Byron's gonna say, "Well, Marcus is Marcus. Like, if anything right. happens, man, just I'll take I'll take the full responsibility for it." Yes, yes, you will. Uh, I just to let you know, your Evelyn car privileges are gone. Um, I well, shoot, I'm not gonna. Break. I know it seems to be the happening place these days. Um, I didn't know it, it is was a nice so car. exciting. Yes, I suppose it is. <laughs> and and, and uh, with that, Byron is a, just a little dumbfounded too. He's just like, what the frack is going on with these people? And I uh, said, well, um, have fun partying. I, I've got... Uh, Listen, Byron, I have a question. Listen, Byron, do... have a... Hmm. Has Joseph been acting weird lately? Lately, <laughs> I mean, like really weird, weirder than usual. No, that was perfect. He, he just asked someone if the Malkavian was acting weird. 
And then and the, he didn't. Uh, well, that was the best response lately. Mark is like, then, really weird. He's been more distant. Uh, I actually commented on that to uh, David just the other night. Uh, sort of, yeah, what are you getting at? Nothing, just getting some vibes from him, that's all. Anyway, Byron, you have a nice evening. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, no, I just wanted to get to the bottom of what's going on with uh, Evelyn's party machine, I mean Evelyn's car. Um, and uh, uh, thanks for letting me know. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, in the future, if you ever do get privileges back with Evelyn's car, no felonies. Only misdemeanors, got it. Yeah, uh, it, 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 the phone's going to hang up. You're going to hear a low, Jesus fucking Christ, <laughs> before it hangs up. Yeah, Marcus will stretch and see. Time to go hit the clubs like always. Party in the clubs. I mean, it's basically been like three straight nights of, well, two and a half nights of partying. Uh, with that, um, Byron is going to call up Joseph this time. Okay. Hello. Hey, Joseph, I understand uh, from David that you're looking into the whole Marcus thing. Uh, I might be able to elucidate you on that point. Okay. Uh, yeah. He indeed did use Evelyn's car to uh, apparently kidnap a, uh, quote, bad person and take uh, that person up to uh, whoever the heck is up in Yonkers. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, you were looking into it. I don't know exactly what you're looking into, but uh, maybe that'll help you out in some regard. He, Marcus doesn't seem to give a flying fuck about it either way, which is a little weird. Um, that came, and that came straight from Marcus, right? Oh, yeah. He's just like, oh, man, they're bad people. Um, no matter, I just took him up there. I don't know if he's alive or dead, but uh, he was alive when I left him there. And that's pretty much what I heard. Okay, thank you for telling me that. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know what's going on. I just want this problem to go away. So if you could somehow do that, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I'll try to wrap this up um, tonight if I can. Uh, I want to get all of this done and over with as soon as possible. Set it all behind us and Cuttery can move forward into a, a brighter future. Sounds good. Uh, let me know what goes on there if you don't mind. I'm, I'm, I'm a little annoyed that he used Evelyn's car for a freaking felony. Oh, yeah, I would have. Uh, I would certainly understand that. Um, oh, thank you. Anyways, uh, anything else? Uh, nope, that's it. Uh, and uh, to complete the trifecta, uh, Byron will hang up and he will call up David. David's pretty much been busy, I suppose, for the past, we'll even say 45 minutes. Uh, the, uh, the sort of wakening process and his usual daily routine is slower because he's adjusting to his new haven and making sure everything works properly. Oh, absolutely. He'd also be checking the security types and such. It does, it seems like everything is, uh is all right enough. I mean, it's he's been keeping an eye on the place for the past few days, and it doesn't seem like there's anyone he recognizes that's staring at the locale or that it's drawing any sort of suspicion. Good, good. He's just he's just going to kind of, you know, give the place a full run over since this is the first night he's been there. Detailed sweep, that kind of thing. Anyway, 45 minutes after he wakes up, he gets the call, right? Yeah. Green. Hey David, uh, this is Byron. Uh, I just um, 
I had a couple calls. I just talked with Marcus and with Joseph. Uh, basically, uh, yeah, Marcus did kidnap uh, some people and take them up to Yonkers and leave them with whoever the heck is up there dealing with the ghost problem. Um, and I told Joseph this, and uh, then I'm now I'm calling you. So I don't. I'm just keeping you in the loop. Uh, the main reason I called is, uh, are we still on to uh, stake out uh, uh, John Worthing's house, or uh, do you have other plans tonight? I. He what? You're, you'll, you'll hear a sigh over the phone. Oh, Yeah, um, he seemed pretty cavalier about it, too. He said, uh, yeah, sure, I took the car, and he said that he found, like, uh, and, and uh, Jordan, I can't remember your exact words, but ba uh, muggers or something, is that what you said? Uh, what they were. Whatever people it was. In the midst of doing per people in the midst of performing crimes is what Marcus was looking for. Right. Uh, apparently, Marcus uh, tried to find people in the uh, in the act of performing crimes, and uh, I guess he saved the victim and kidnapped. Ended up uh, somehow incapacitating the uh, uh, the the wrongdoer and and kidnapping them and taking them them up to Yonkers. Wait, 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 wait. Are you speaking in plurals? Actually, if I did, that's wrong. Because uh, Byron only thinks there's one because that's all that he would have had to go on. And, and okay. uh, Jordan never mentioned okay. plural. Yeah, the three of us all, I only found one hair, so the three of us almost certainly only think one person. Okay, because I thought that's what you meant when you said muggers. Yeah, I, I, was, I was mixing... Uh, OOC knowledge, so glad you caught that. I was trying to keep that separate. Okay, well, in that case. So... He was playing vigilante when he picked his victims. That is the gist I get. Uh, and uh, for, the, for the record, uh, he didn't seem to have any remorse over it. Uh, and while I think that his choice of victims are laudable, I I don't know. I don't know. The way he went about it may have been better. I... I literally do not know what to say about this. Well, the, the good news is, uh, when I told Joseph, he said he would, he would take care of it. Um, and for my part, I'm happy to let Joseph take care of it. Wait, wait, wait. Take care of it how? I didn't ask. Joseph is crazy. Yeah, he is a Malkavian. He's the most lucid Malkavian I think I've ever met. But yeah, he's not entirely sane. That is true. And he has murdered people before. So, I mean, Byron is actually coming to the conclusion now, uh, after the fact. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what he is planning. Yeah, I wonder what he's planning. When, when you were talking to him, you, you didn't happen to uh, find out where this guy is, did you? No. Somewhere in Yonkers. Well, good but news. Uh, Joseph and Marcus apparently both know. I don't know that either one of them are going to be 
telling us that straight up. I mean, the good news is I know where to find the information for a low, low price of $2,000. He has what we need. So, so. He's got what you need. Matt's just making a mint off knowing where this guy lives. <laughs> so, well, if if uh, if you think we should, uh, if you think we should make our way up to there and make sure that uh, Joseph doesn't do something we'll all regret, uh, I can definitely make the call and get the information. Um, just. Quick FYI, uh, probably at some point uh, before you make that call, it probably would have been immediately, but uh, uh, just for story purposes, um, Joseph's going to give David a call. All right, well, let's just say that it's ringing now on the uh, second line or whatever the heck it is. So. Ah, fuck. Speak of the devil. I'm getting a call from Joseph. I'll get back to you. Sounds good. I know. Click. Joseph. Hey, David. Byron just told me. That uh, Marcus apparently kidnapped people and uh, gave them to this unknown necromancer. Playing A vigilante. Person. A person. Playing it's vigilante. Playing vigilante in order to pay him off. I was always, uh, by the book. I don't like that. I like it better than some random person, but not by much. Yeah. I know there's been at least a couple of cases uh, gone in, arrested someone, found that they only committed it because they had to. Not they had to, to, to eat or anything, they had to because it was either that or die. I don't like it at all. So what are you planning on doing? Byron told me that you have some kind of plan. I plan on me and Marcus going up there, me getting the information of what happened from the old man, and then my reactions based on what the old man will tell me. Well, oh, shit, I should not have said old man there. Uh, the necromancer. And my reactions based on what the necromancer will tell me. And how are you going to get Marcus to go with you? Do you think asking politely would work? No. I know that I wouldn't go visit a necromancer if it wasn't strictly necessary, or if I didn't think it was. Yeah. Any which way you cut it, I plan on going up there to Marcus to ask the necromancer, what happened. So how are you planning on getting him? Oh. Uh, probably be a pause. Uh, can't see what Joseph's doing, but he's probably looking down at uh, whatever he has in his hands at the moment. Say, a number of contingencies. Because I don't see how bringing along a staked Marcus and leaving him in the car outside will help the situation at all. Not sure how it would hurt it. Well, there's the fact that I don't think you could s survive a stand-up fight against him.
Is that an offer for help? Or is that an offer of help? No. I think your plan is bad. Are you going to stop me? I might, uh... I might tell Marcus. I don't know. It feels like adding more vigilante justice to this isn't the right way to go. I don't know. Well, I'll be honest with you. I would actually prefer to go to the cops, but I don't see that working out very well. No, it would be a masquerade violation at the very least. At the very least. You have this old man's address? Still don't know he's an old man. Um, you have this necromancer's address? Yeah. Well, I have instructions how to get to there. You can always call the cops on that place. For some reason, I, I think a necromancer is going to have uh, enough sense to uh, not be arrested by the cops. And... Uh, even if he is, I really don't want to piss off a necromancer. That's the other reason I'm not too sure about you going up there to confront him about what he does with the victims. Well, I'll ask politely. If he gets mad at me for it, well, not a lot I can do about that. That said, if I do that, I think, at the very least, it would be entirely on my head. If I call the police, well, I'm not sure how he'd react. It'd probably be on Marcus's head, too, if you brought him. Well, if it's something horrible enough to I need to throw a major fit over it. Well, Marcus is the one that did it. Can't exactly try him in a court of law. Unless you've got a poofy wig. <laughs> Aaron just said, Fuck it. in your channel timed out. <laughs> Apparently he didn't like my joke. He did not like your joke. User was moved to your channel. Welcome back, Aaron. My internet farted. Yep. We we we, we just assumed you didn't like Joseph's joke. Uh, what was the last thing you heard? No, I, I heard the joke. I actually responded to it. Oh, we didn't get a response. Also, I, I, I booted you from the map tool, but I think it was because you just connected to it again. <laughs> I thought you were having a connection issue with map tool as well. My apologies. You son of a bitch. So, Sean, where do you think Marcus is right now? Hmm. Well, he was partying. Where do I think he is right now, or where does Joseph think he is right now? Because the answer to those questions are entirely different. I would like to know both answers. Joseph thinks... Uh, no, I never heard that you were partying. Did I? Um, well, Joseph knows you're safe. He... Byron told... Oh, hmm. Well, these are all things that would have happened with Joseph said that can happen with, without OC knowledge, but I would have not thought of. Thank you. Um, 
One, Byron told, uh, uh, or at least talked to you about um, what happened. That means that it's very likely that he may have told the other side that Joseph's planning on something. So, therefore, location entirely unknown. I feel like I should be singing Destination Unknown. On both accounts, I, I have no idea. Could be anywhere. Out of character, Marcus is partying. Out of character, I wish Marcus was at the flesh. I was at your church while you were running around Astoria. Just hanging out with Craig and Rain. I'd laugh. Anyway, we're playing um, hearts. Back to the conversation that Joseph and uh, David are having. I, uh, I think I made that joke and I didn't hear your response. All right. Yeah, I'll see if I can uh, dig my powdered wig out of storage. Yeah. Um, while you're doing that, though, uh, well, given all of this, what do you think should be done? Well, let me ask you something. I just stabbed that driver. Dun, dun, dun. I made a very bad decision. I yes. saw him go for uh nearly hit I think it was Craig. Um saw him nearly hit Craig and I just reacted. I didn't think about it at all or do anything like that. I just did it. Wasn't uh, something I planned. Wasn't uh, something I gave any thought to. It's just he is a threat. And at the time, I think it was still in my mind that he was threatening Craig's life. And that means that I have to protect Craig. He has to die. Had I paused a moment, I probably would have realized, oh, hey, he's not actually a threat, and this may be a wake-up call. But I didn't. I just reacted. All right. Well, I'm inclined to think that uh, Marcus's judgment was as impaired by whatever that ghost did to him as yours was when you did that. So, I encourage you to talk to him about it and try to get him to see the error of his ways. But if you decide to arbitrarily dispense justice for what's happened. I don't intend to dispense justice. The first foremost thing I want to know is what happened. Specifically what went through my mind and what's going through my mind is what happened to that little girl. Well, you might want to talk to Marcus about that too. If he was there, he might know exactly how she was exercised. Anyway, If you decide to dispense justice, just keep in mind, you've done some pretty terrible things too. 
At least one. Yeah, I'll keep it in mind. You want me to call up Marcus and tell him you have some questions for him? I don't know if he's taking your calls yet. Or if he's taking mine. He's not. At least not mine. Um, hmm. Alright, where do you want him to uh, meet him? Your church? The estates? Underground in the sky. I think I'll give him a call. All right. Click. And uh, Joseph will do that. Marcus will answer the phone. Paulson! I did that so hard my teeth started vibrating. Hey, Marcus. What's up, Joseph? What exactly happened to the little girl? Marcus will pull the will pull the pull the phone away from his head like he didn't hear it correctly and it's like, could you repeat that? It's a little loud here. Then you should probably go somewhere quieter. What exactly happened to that little girl? Took care of her. Specifics. We sent her soul on. I don't know the details. Do I look like, do I look like a person who understands the makings of what goes on between ghosts and whatever? Anything at all you can give me more specific than that? I, I mean, there told was you a, anything He said saw? that she was a, she said, he said that she was a malevolent spirit and that he was sending her on. And I'm trying to remember exactly what he said, but it's a little bit difficult. Uh, he said to the shadow lamps. Hey, 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 you weren't there. <laughs> it's oh. up to Marcus to try to remember. <laughs> Sorry. Something, it was, he opened up, he opened up some door and put her in, and put her through it. So you saw through this door? I mean, I was sitting on the couch when it happened. The door was, <laughs> I, had a, I had a weird angle, but... It, yeah, I had a pretty bad angle. I don't really want to talk about it. That sounds like an evasion. Did you see through the door or not? I mean, I don't, I don't know if I don't know if I actually saw through the door. Nope. It was like straight. I didn't see through the door. So you had no idea what was on the other side. Nope. Actually, what looked on the other side, since the door was laying uh, horizontally in the air above the little girl, it looked like the rest of the house was <laughs> just like, just, you know, the door was open. You saw, you know, the little girl getting stuck through one end. The door was hanging off the end just because it opened inward. So he saw the flap of the door <laughs> and he saw the wall behind the door. <laughs> I mean.
Oh, I mean, just... basically, Marcus, did, Marcus didn't see anything really amazing. I mean, from, from what it looked like to Marcus, at least the doorway itself, the little girl was, uh, it was like a basketball hoop, like a reverse basketball, like someone's throwing it in. And as the little girl was going from the bottom to the top, she was disappearing, and she wasn't going through the doorway. <laughs> like, he, he couldn't see her as she was being pushed up, or rather thrown up was... by the man. Just quick FYI for, uh, you know, where Joseph's coming from. Um, it's he, There's a definite heaven and hell, and she went to one or the other, and we didn't fix the problem. He knows that much. So she's, I mean, if that's what's stopping her from getting into heaven. Just FYI, that's where he's coming from. Um, but back in character. Um, so she looked happy going through this door. She looks surprised. Surprised not surprised is not happy. You try you try teleporting someone about two hours away from where they think they are. So he just pulled her out and shoved her to this door without any ado, any conversation, any fixing her problems, any anything at all? Oh, he mostly just said she was a malevolent spirit and that whatever she was in life and how tra no matter how tragic her death was, she should move on. So, she looked happy going through this door. I wouldn't say that. So, she looked angry, sad, in pain? Not in pain. I mean, did I see her face at all? She looked absolutely horrendously horrif you know, horrendously horrified, yes. Uh, in addition to being incredibly dumbstruck and flummoxed and uh, bedazzled and shocked by this sudden turn of events, she looked really goddamn terrified of the necromancer before he threw her up through the doorway, screaming the entire time. <laughs> now here's the thing, Marcus is, has in his new fuck it all mode, so I don't know, I think, I don't know if he would just say that, or if he'd actually try to lie here. Well, you can always uh, roll all. a you could roll a one d ten for yourself and de decide that way if you so wish, Jordan. Yeah, there. You just just keep in mind that he is in fuck it all mode, but he's also Joseph. He's talking to. What sort of spectrum would you like on the whole uh, fuck it all or try to lie, Jordan? Uh, let's take we'll take high as being fuck it all. I'll roll again because apparently it says oh, invalid no. expression. No, no, you rolled a ten. <laughs> Marcus is just like, she looked kind of scared, to be honest. So, he took a scared girl and shoved her through a door. That's the gist of it. A scared ghost, excuse me. She was a ghost in a malevolent spirit. Not a little girl. She died many decades ago. Yeah, there's a couple of guys, uh, you know, that, uh, died a few centuries ago. Sometimes they act like six-year-olds. Making a political statement there, Joseph? Doesn't always, doesn't everyone always think I am? I don't know, man. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Hmm. Well, I guess I understand why you did what you did. I mean, I'm still seeing shit, man. Yeah. That's... gonna go away with just her. That'll take a little bit of time. Side note. David could hear this conversation. He would be horrified with Joseph apparently caring more about the ghost than the, uh, living person. Well, good thing David Green can't hear this guy. No, I, I know, I know. He's, he's under the impression that they were horrified for the same reasons. <laughs> no, ghost he, ghost he had to protect. Living person? Yeah. Should have saved him. Had no idea what the fuck was going on. Ghost? 
He fucked that up. Well. Bye. And then he'll hang up. Oons, 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 oons. What about Joseph? Hmm. I I think I'll leave that in uh in uh the the chat. Okay. Well, uh, you know, David got off the phone with Joseph. He did say he'd call Byron back. And that he will. Pick up the phone, motherfucker. And without preamble, without anything else, Byron's going to say, why do operating systems use, use backslashes? Meanwhile, URL addresses use regular slashes. I don't understand why they change all this shit around. Oh, sorry, sorry uh, David, what? You haven't learned how to turn on a computer yet? Oh, it's on. And this nut scrape thing, I don't know what it is. It's on, too. <laughs> No, no, I, I just love that. You're like, oh, it's on. <laughs> like you're about to fight the computer. I think Byron is, in, <laughs> yeah, yeah, nuts, great. That's what, that's what, uh, that was the thing we called it. All right, so, uh, yeah, he's in fisticuffs with a computer at Astoria Estates. Uh, it, it, out of character. Um, I'll say, oh, it, what's up, David? It, uh... It looks like I'm going to have time tonight to uh, keep scoping the place out with you. But uh, first things first, I'm uh, going to be swinging by Detective Fonsworth's place to see if he's got the schedules for uh, our two prospective targets. Sounds good. Uh, how about you uh, give me a call uh, uh, once you have those, and if it looks like... Uh, uh, John Worthing will be around tonight. Uh, we can head up there. I'm I'm close. I have a, a few loose ends to tie up here. Just so you know, everyone's always on call. Can't rely on these schedules with cops. Ah, fair enough. Yeah, I, I see it. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> Byron tries to dominate the Netscape. Unfortunately, Byron cannot make eye contact with Netscape. <laughs> Damn it. Um, all right. Uh, 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 Byron is... Uh, Byron takes that. I think. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, still, let me know when you're finished up there. I can probably get there and meet you there within five minutes. All right. Click. And uh, David's going to try and uh, put up a disguise again and head out. Okay, go ahead and uh, give me your uh, your roll and your difficulty there, David. At difficulty 7, uh, David tries, and he's going to uh, have to attempt it again because he fails. David's going to kind of curse, and, uh, yeah, he'll, tr he'll try again. And uh, he's kind of resolving in his head that he clearly needs to work on uh, getting better at this. By the way, um, obviously with only one success, I can't actually improve my appearance, right? Uh, I would say no. If you want to look the way you want to appear, like actually have a good control of changing your appearance, I'd definitely say three successes. So does that mean I wouldn't need to spend the two Vitae until I've actually gotten three successes? Uh, vampires wishing to mask themselves as a person more attractive than they are must pay additional blood points. 
Uh, as far as I'm aware, yeah. I, I would just say you go ahead and roll the successes and uh, then spend the blood points. All right, well, in that case, David's aiming to look the way he looked in life with the, you know, assuming he gets three successes with, obviously, lesser results um, if he doesn't. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, you are a normal, ugly mortal. <laughs> Good enough. And uh, the way he looked in life was appearance, too, by the way. I mean, we all can't look as good as Marcus. David doesn't want to. That draws undue attention. Yeah, then he'll uh, set up for Fonsworth's place. Okay. Nutscrape Navigator uh, laughs at Byron's futile attack <laughs> before Byron leaves. Probably by pro you know, popping up some sort of error that isn't listed in the book. In the book. <laughs> What is an arrow 876? I've never heard of such a thing. What is 404 not found? He's probably seen a few of those. Uh, who is 404 and why do I want to find him? All right. Uh, Byron uh, had doubt that, well, obviously David's going to be hitting up Fonsworth first anyway. As it turns out, uh, Fonsworth does have the schedules. They are currently, it is a uh, Monday night situation. Both uh, Fonsworth and Espada have uh, heavy work weeks. Uh, in regards, like them actually having a day off entirely. Uh, John, the dispatcher, has Friday off and uh, Sunday off. Espada has Saturday and Sunday. Um, eh, you can always, you know, jot that down if it seems important to you so you can remind me if we forget in future sessions. In regards to actual breaks, I mean, obviously, uh, they're free to take their lunch whenever they see fit, whenever they can. Due to the whole right. law enforcement thing. Okay, well, now that we're here, David's first going to call up Joseph. Hello. It looks like Espada's got Saturdays and Sundays off. Okay. Keep me updated on that front so that uh, we can get our police schools together once we all have them. Yeah. Click. And then David's going to uh, call Byron. Uh, Byron will answer, and he's not bitching at this point, which is a plus. Uh, what's up? Uh, what's up? Um. Does uh. Does it look like Worthing has a night shift tonight, or no night shift? Um, he does. Uh, his, uh, his schedule is sort of, like, erratic with, like, the dispatcher thing. Uh, for his night shift, he definitely has one. He'll probably be getting back, uh, just at the same time that you vampires would, uh, be low to be standing outside, because you'd be worried about making it back to your haven in time. But you are technically in your neighborhood, so... I mean, it's not a problem if you try to secure, you know, shelter somewhere else. That'd be like a survival jack. <laughs> Worthing has a uh, shift tonight. He won't be in. Uh, when's the first night uh, you think he'll be open? When's the uh, next night that he doesn't have a night shift? Uh, actually ends up being on... Uh... 
Wednesday, where uh, his night shift suddenly becomes day. So he, without a day off, he suddenly has this collusion moment where he barely has any time to sleep. <laughs> it, uh, it looks like on Wednesday evening, he'll be getting back and be getting back exhausted. That might be our best night. Sounds good. Uh, I have a thing on Wednesday, but uh, I think I can easily enough meet you there at uh, midnight. He should be out cold by then, right? I would think so. He apparently has a back-to-back -back day shift and night shift prior to that evening. Sounds like the best time to approach him then. Um, yeah. Let's uh, let's uh, uh, put it down for uh, Wednesday at uh, well, I guess technically Thursday at midnight. Sounds like a plan. All right. Cool. Uh, thanks a bunch for looking that up. Cool. Yeah. Okay. In the middle of what Byron's saying, click. <laughs> and Byron, just look at the phone. Just like whatever. <laughs> thanks Go on doing whatever for, heck you. Thanks a bunch for click. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And uh, now David That's will <laughs> have... Now David will uh, ask the detective, so have you uh, thought of any questions to ask? Mm, he shakes his head. It's, uh, it's clear that it's uh, a whole lot for him to take in right now. He's still trying to process everything. There's no guarantee that he might even be able to process everything. That's right. I don't think David has fully processed everything yet. And he's had decades to work on it. Alright, well... Let me know if you do. He nods. And, uh... David will head on out. All right. David, then I guess is going to kind of spend the rest of the night working on uh, implementing more of the security features he had back at his old haven and uh, moving whatever items are left to this new one. Yeah. Okay. In that case, uh, Byron is going to continue to uh, fiddle about with his uh, dipping into all sorts of saucy political tidbits. Oh my. Yeah, all he wants is a city political event. I mean, a lot of these things he would know. Uh, they're, they're, they have events that are run through like the Chamber of Commerce a lot of times and uh, that type of thing. He's just trying to get an event schedule that maybe he can go meet and greet people. Sure, he can, he can definitely do that sort of thing. Uh, Let's see. We we know Byron doesn't have anything in computers. Does he have anything in technology? Oh hell no. Okay. He's got okay. a minus one, I think. <laughs> no, we're going to default to uh, wits here at a uh, difficulty nine. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Let's look. Nope. He is well. Yeah, one off. With, with, with that uh, into being a botch, uh, Byron uh, resolves himself to, uh, first off, he's uh, he, he, he's sure that he needs to attend classes more because it connects to the second option. He now has an error that is causing the computer to freeze. And every time he tries the whole power off, maybe power it back on, 
the same error pops up. Some sort of like blue screen system error hard drive failure imminent? What does that mean? Yeah, um, Byron's going to take a post-it and he's going to say, oops, Byron, and he's just going to stick it on the screen and leave. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I, I thought the difficulty nine was fair because it's like even with you following the book, you're trying to do like research for something on the Internet without any computer technology. You're just kind of like, well, I'll click on this link. We'll see where it goes. <laughs> Oh, uh, if he had found anything, uh, like, uh, for instance, if he had been, uh, if he had had to go uh, uh, deal with uh, John Worthing tonight, I would say I would have done a roll against Wits with difficulty 10, whether he saved the, uh, the, the, brow uh, the, the progress in the browser or not. So it's fair. So, yes, uh, good news. Uh, you've defeated Nutscrape. Bad news. Uh, uh, you can't get it. You you, you can't get the internet on again. <laughs> the, 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 the computer just keeps popping up the same air, so oops. <laughs> what would Byron like to do? After, he thought he totally had a handle on this, Mom. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be Evelyn's problem. It's what's going to happen. It's whoever sits at that desk is uh, going to come and the hard drive is going to be failing. And then you say, what the fuck? And they're going to go up and say, Evelyn, who the hell is Byron? Why is my computer blowing up? <laughs> but yeah, uh, Byron will also probably... Uh, He'll leave that there, and then he'll go up and he'll leave a note uh, on Evelyn's desk saying, I don't know what, but that computer just decided to die or something, and I'm going home. Okay. Joseph uh, engages in his plan. And, uh, Marcus engages in his plan. <laughs> You're making it out like I have some grandiose plan over here. You don't? I mean, I do and everything, but... I'm getting a bad feeling about time passes. Feel feel free to describe the activities of your various characters if 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 you know if you're not sensitive about sharing information with the others, go for it. This is your moment. Live for the moment in character. This may be one of the last chances you get to do so. Well well Joseph while well, Joseph stands stock still and slowly pets the item in his hand. Well, Marcus is busy partying. Living the free life. Does this crash? No, no crash. Yeah, it crashed. I I'm letting anyone who, uh, you know, wants to get in the various activities or uh, any other messages that they need to send to me to confirm situations uh, go through.
like an awkward silence. Just, just like the, like the ominous, the uh, front of the storm or something. <laughs> no, it's okay, no, it, guys. It, you can talk it, to each other. It's all right. No, no. It feels like a pretty comfortable silence to me. It, it's just Byron doing secret stuff in the background on, on Whisper, and he's gonna end up giving us all to the spot. Well, I, I mean, uh, oh. he did. He did just learn how to whisper in the session. <laughs> No, I mean, well, I mean, yeah, you asked Grimeth, and I said, well, fine, I'll just go look up stuff on, stuff on the computer. That, that was everything I wrote, essentially, was, was that, was, all right, fine, I'll look up political events. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, Byron is, I don't know what time it is, but if the computer blew up, Byron is going to head home. Yep, okay, in that case, uh... The four uh, kindred continue about uh, their nights uh, with Marcus uh, in his activities and David uh, doing as he is announced and Byron returning to his haven and Marcus in his activities as well. So uh, jo is Joseph going to uh, stop engaging in his activities before sunrise or uh, will he commit to them again? He'll commit to them again. Okay. In that case, Joseph finds himself uh, alone. Again. As 5 a.m. passes and the sun approaches. And Marcus returns from his hard night of partying to uh, the destination he has chosen for himself. A temporary haven of sorts, for it seems that, uh, contrary to the, uh, the, the the blithe, nonchalant front he uh, wishes to present to others. There are deep concerns running through his own mind. And David, a few minutes after 5 a.m., perhaps uh, doing uh, another check through various things, uh, manages to find a message on ShrekNet that may change the course of everything. Session's over. Woo! Drop the mic, we out. No talking. I <laughs> think... There could never be talking again. Fuck talking. I've lost talking privileges along with Evelyn's car privileges. Talking is for people that yeah. still have words, too. Oh, so you're talking about the venture now. All right, Let's so see I guess here. Byron will... Everyone gets four experience points. Uh, no spending them, because there is not enough time to properly reflect on the situation, since I'm going to assume these sessions are going to keep happening... Uh, on the next day, and the next day, and the next day. But uh, you guys got to spend last time, not this time. Uh, Marcus will regain two points of willpower. A combination of achieving something, a goal that his character cared about, in addition to uh, very much fulfilling his nature, in spite of the severity of the situation around him. Players, do you have any questions? Not a question per se. I was just hoping that I'd be able to pick up the next dot of performance. I think uh, I think you'd actually need to experiment with performance more. Perhaps you know the next time. Uh, perhaps after next session. Uh, I think it'll be a good enough time to allow people to spend experience points, and uh, you'll be able to pick up performance then if uh, David keeps practicing. Fair enough. And he, uh, he probably will. Hey, we don't have a question. I have more of a comment. I really liked the fact that Marcus was the guy that went behind everyone's back this session and was all sneaky. Yeah, it's usually like the other too. way around. It's usually the other way around, someone else so, in the party being sneaky. And not only that, but, you know, he's the one who went behind everyone's back and did something sneaky and has fucking derailed the entire coterie. <laughs> This is how you this is how you drive the bus.
Yeah, Marcus normally just sort of goes with the flow and uh, tries not to get too involved with stuff. That was, I was very surprised when I was like, was, is that knowledge you should have? Oh, it is knowledge you should have in character. That, that threw me off. I don't think I ever. I still don't know what how many dots you have. If you if you ever mentioned it, I forgot it. I have three yeah. dots in op, I have three dots in aspects. He doesn't talk about it in character. But out of character, I have three dots in aspects. But yeah, in character, he doesn't show off what powers he has. Aside from celerity, but that's celerity. Right. You, you can't really you can't really use celerity and not show it off. I mean, at this point, I think that everyone has seen all of David's powers. Because, for fuck's sake, he's not going to not use Obfuscate 3 now that he can walk around in public. Yeah, and as for Byron, I think, I don't think Byron's used Dreadful Gaze in front of anyone, so they wouldn't know about that. And he may have mentioned it, I don't remember. And Fortitude 2, how do you test for that? So, but they've seen everything else. Or they know of, because they taught it to him. Right. And people have seen him use Celerity, and he's clearly ridiculously fucking strong. David, that is. And, uh... Right, right. The whole Coterie has seen him use his Dark Vision, and, uh... I, I think it's pretty well known that he can grow those claws for fighting that giant tentacle monster. So I need 15 experience points. And then I can see Joseph. That's the only encounter where I've used those claws so far, right? I think, so. yes. I think so. Yeah, uh, for his part, Byron thinks you're a badass because dang you took that thing down like a pro to be fair even without the uh you know lol rock hacks uh david is still kind of a badass he's he's got potent celerity and aggro claws it's just he's fragile as fuck Last cannon works very well if no one can see you coming. Yeah, no, it's great for alpha strikes. Alpha strike. <laughs> what it is. Get off an attack that... But yeah, I'll probably want to pick up Fortitude. Probably later, rather than sooner. So, uh, you need 15 to be able to see Joseph. Joseph needs, uh, 20 to be able to stay hidden. Yeah, it's but you don't know how... Game. But Joseph, Joseph doesn't know that Marcus is that close seeing him. Joseph's using uh, Obfuscate a lot recently. Um, that said, either which way, it's not spending it, and it, I am willing to bet whatever goes down is probably going, is probably going to go down uh, next session. Gave a chance for the hammer to fall, but the string only tautened rather than being released. Yep, the Sword of Damocles is hanging pretty heavy these days. Mm 
Yeah, hence uh, Byron's comment to Marcus with weight off your shoulders. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's been getting heavier and heavier. <laughs> Even with the thing with Joseph Marcus, it still feels a lot better. Well, Joseph will decide what, uh, it, well, hopefully Joseph will decide uh, what ultimately happens. Whether or not I keep that, thinking that. Whether or not that, that, that weight off your shoulder was worth it. Actually, no, I guess it's the old dude that decides what the fuck happens, probably. Assuming Joseph does what he's planning to do. It all depends you know, it, on what David just you know, read on Shrekneck. I'm visualizing, you're watching the back of a monitor and just uh, 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 David's face just glowing from the screen and his eyes getting wide. And then it just cuts to black, but to be continued on the screen. That's what I'm visualizing. With like law and orders. Dun dun. Dun dun. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm picturing too. Dun dun. Welcome to Law and Order. Welcome to Law and Order Special Vampires Unit. Hey, I might even watch that show. Hey, I mean, as long as it's set in New York. <laughs> Law and Order Supernatural Victim Squad. You guys are totally on the case. Created by Dick Wolf. Dun dun. But I do like that the party is sort of focusing on more internal problems and, you know, not getting involved in the uh, problems in the city, even though those are probably bigger problems. Yeah, earlier when, uh, earlier when, uh, Byron went back into Elysium. I was like, great, back into Elysium politics again. Because we do keep involving ourselves in Elysium politics. I think the Archon is yeah. probably happy that we're not getting involved for once. Yeah, probably. Um, I mean, obviously we're going to have to be involved to a certain extent to uh, maintain our statuses, which is probably more important for David than it is for the rest of you, but uh, still it is a nice uh, break in character. Oh, uh, Aaron, a uh, question for you in the chat. Oh? Why did you tell so much about the vampire world to your ghoul? Oh, um... Because David really fucking detests the idea of just drafting someone into all of this bullshit, and especially then leaving them ignorant about parts of it. I'm pretty sure you've picked up on the fact that much the same thing happened to David. He was basically drafted into it uh, for malicious reasons, in the case of his sire, um, and wasn't exactly given the fullest education, so... What Dave is really trying to do is trying to, uh, at least in so much as it's possible, uh, allow the detective some level of informed consent. Um, at least that's what's happening in his head. Also, he wants to make sure that the uh, detective is actually uh, prepared for how this shit works so he doesn't necessarily go stepping on toes or ignoring things that might be leads. So, a lot of reasons. Yeah, I mean, almost a better question is, why hasn't Byron told everyone all this stuff? Um, and the other side of the coin is that 
Byron thinks it might be more dangerous to tell her about it because she's not involving herself. She's not a cop. She doesn't have to – she's not on a day-to-day -day basis dealing with crazy shit like this guy will be. So uh, Byron actually thinks uh, ignorance is probably safer for, for Evelyn. So. so, yeah, basically uh, David is – In a way, he's almost hoping that uh, uh, Detective Fonsworth will actually say, all right, you know what? As hard as this is for me to say, I don't think I want to be a ghoul. Like, but yeah, um, yeah D David's got a bunch of in-character reasons to do it. That reminds me of something, oh. Aaron. Yeah. Your character was drafted, so was Marcus. Whereas your character <laughs> made an idealist, Marcus became a cynic. Kinda. Um, David was less... Uh, I mean, he, he was drafted into the fight, but that wasn't why he was embraced. That's why Marcus was embraced. Yeah. And Corridor things. Yeah, David was embraced because his sire was one of those... Uh, those petty, evil Nosferatu who just like to uh, fuck up things that are uh, pretty and successful and happy and all that sort of shit. The, the, the vindictive kind who likes to spread the uh, ugliness and misery around. And then David happened to also end up getting drafted because, you know, he got embraced into the Camarilla. Cynicism, ho! Yeah, and you know, if uh, uh, David ever asked uh, Byron, or even probably Joseph, about uh, whether or not a ghoul is going to up and tell you, no, I don't want to be a ghoul anymore, I think, uh, yeah, that's just not going to happen. I, <laughs> I mean, you know that out of character. Right. David's still wants to uh, think, though, that uh, he's treating his ghouls in such a way that even if they weren't bloodbound, they would uh, be willing to uh, continue working with him. Regardless of whether or not they actually would, he, he just wants to think that, you know? Right. And uh, uh, from Bi for Byron's part, I mean, Byron understands that, you know, uh, a ghoul's love is unconditional, and he doesn't have to be nice to Evelyn or anything like that, technically, but uh, if, he were to, if he were the type to go see a shrink, you know, a vampire shrink, which he isn't, he would have to admit that he does it because she's filling a void for him, not because he, she needs it type of thing. It's more for him than for him, uh, for her, rather. So, uh, but yeah, if, uh, it's an interesting dynamic. I'll put it that way. I thought that was interesting. I didn't mention it, but I thought it was interesting that, uh, you were just spilling the beans left and right to uh, to uh, uh, Fonsworth. Let's see here. Metal Slime Hunt says, I can't believe the coterie didn't implode. Well, uh, <laughs> you still got time. You're saying that as though it's not going to. You're saying as if it didn't already happen. <laughs> you basically have two camps now. <laughs> One of them's crazy. The other one's crazy. <gasps> Which kind of crazy do you like? <laughs> what flavor? Wait, where crazy? are you getting two? I'm counting. Four. I'm counting four camps. Um, maybe three and a half. Byron's in his own. He's in the, I don't want to know, just take care of it, and just don't bother me anymore, can't. <laughs> Strange. I, I, I think I'm counting like seven by now. That's just because of the voices in your head. You're counting those two. You shouldn't oh, count those as separate to? factions. How does Joseph really feel about the girl disappearing? 
Let, let me tell. Tell let me, me let about me your mother. Way. Let me put it this way: the worst thing you can imagine Joseph doing to Marcus, he'd do again and again and again and again. And that again. that's because he's fairly suspicious of what he did. He doesn't know the details. He, he, he just knows that there's something probably bad. But, but, but is it really Marcus's fault? He didn't know yes. better. Yes, it is. I mean, it's that necromancer, <laughs> man. You need, to, you need to take care of that problem or otherwise all sorts of people with all sorts of little girl ghosts might get sacrificed. I think the kicker is that Marcus knows that Joseph knows what he did. Well, he already he knew that before. A lot of things, people know a lot of things about other things, about things. I've confused myself. This, is, myself. Th this has been the, uh, the, the, the most secretive session we've had with uh, notes passing amongst actually all of the players. <laughs> it's just like a regular game of Vampire the Masquerade. He watches Oprah? Where the hell that come from? Dude, you can watch Oprah, you just gotta catch the reruns late at night. No, I mean like, what, 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 how that, I don't know, where'd that come from? Why? I don't know, man. I, I guess you're know, giving man. free cars to everyone. I think that's what he's saying. Don't mean no. that, everyone. That didn't mean anything. I totally didn't roll that out in the open for no reason. Super. I don't know about y'all, but I totally believe it. And, and apparently Jordan wanted to roll back at me in secretly. <laughs> what the hell? What are you doing, Jordan? <laughs> Take that. I don't want to. So, some, well, that... someone, need, someone needs to figure out how to use the chat commands. That was I don't a really know why good he's doing roll, it, too. Like... I don't even know why he's doing invalid expressions now, either. But, I mean, that roll, and if it's just against even a difficulty 7, you succeed on every single one. That's stupidly awesome. Maybe it was my mindfuck Sean roll. I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. Why, why, wait, why, why, why are you coming out of the game to that? The game is alive, Sean. The game is real life. Does that mean that if you die in the game, you die in real life? The Matrix taught me that yes, that is the case. Hmm. I wonder when Byron and Joseph are going to get titles. Oh goodness, alright. Joseph totally watches Oprah. What is it, under label? Is that what it is? Or is it something else? And the silence returns. There's actually a question that I was thinking uh, in the chat for you, Oh boy. Did I actually have a story of why Penelope had a... <laughs> Larian? My goodness, man. Larian tries, everyone. He tries. <laughs> he tries. To answer your question, I... I, I perhaps you've not been around uh, little kids and their uh, insistence on wearing whatever they please. <laughs> 
I'm a six-year-old girl. I'm gonna wear whatever the fuck I please. What do you mean it's July? Fuck you. I I I certainly have known my uh my collection of little kids who uh remain obstinate in their decisions to wear outfits, and their parents just they don't care enough, or they just like it's not a it's not an important point to argue about, or they want to let the little kids live in their fantasy. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> a story to go along with this, uh, my mother, she uh, taught at a uh, uh, grade school uh, for a while, and there was just one little girl that always wore long sleeves to shirt. Now, I grew up in Florida, so long sleeves are weird, and teachers are gossips, and they thought maybe there was abuse going on. No, no, no. It comes down, the girl just liked long sleeve shirts, and that's all she wanted. She would, like, cry if she had to wear a short sleeve shirt. So, yeah, I, I get where Grimace is coming from. But, but <laughs> as for, you know, why the kid, you know, we, we get into the whole sort of situation where uh, uh, you first have to consider the fact that the Wraith can appear however it wants. Now, as for the newspaper article itself, it's possible that inner inaccuracies may have been made. Because how many people care about, you know, yet another missing person here in the world of darkness? And uh, from David's perspective, as far as he knows or cares, that ghost could easily just have been adopting that persona to fuck with everyone. He doesn't really see it as uh, mattering so much as the events that surrounded it. So, scarf, whatever. Little girl ghost? It's not a real little girl, it's a ghost. That's another thing to keep in mind, too. Like, we still get back to the whole arc where, you know, speaking as to storyteller, this could still be the killer who uh, obviously knew the names of his victims and is choosing to appear as a victim, Penelope Nelson. Yeah, so as far as David's concerned, this isn't a little girl, this isn't a victim, this is a ghost. That's the important part. It is... I mean, that's, that's what Marcus was saying. He said it was a malevolent spirit. It's not yeah, a little girl anymore. It's dead, it's a monster, and it's fucking with the coterie. The part that David has a problem with is the cost of getting rid of it. What's a few humans? They're just lick sticks. Yeah, see, that's... That's the difference between David and Joseph on this. And that's it's actually where the conflict not. Comes David from. doesn't trust anyone. It doesn't matter if he'd interacted with the ghost. As far as he's concerned, it's still a fucking ghost. And he already knows it can cause hallucinations and madness. There is nothing to be trusted about how it presents itself. Nothing. The, the one interaction David had, a mirror, apparently, in Detective Fonsworth's apartment shattered right in front of him and Marcus. Only it didn't shatter. Nothing about how this ghost presents anything can be trusted, because it works in illusions and lies. And David's already kind of paranoid. So, Sean, were you just going to tell them that you're hiding in my apartment with a shotgun? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he totally didn't tell them or anything when he said my character is exactly where it is on the map. <laughs> I'm just imagining uh, the guys, anyone that watches this on YouTube is like, where, where is he? Where is we can't see the map. Well, that's part of the fun, right? Yeah, you're going to have to watch one of the 20 different videos for this session that I had to make. <laughs> because, but you still uh, made them, and that's what matters. Because for some reason... Love. It's a labor I'm, I'm almost ready to choose to abort. Poor choice of words, my bad. Larian, I don't know what words you're trying to put together there, but they're the wrong ones. Larian is not exactly the best at expressing <laughs> thoughts in the English language. Larian tries, though, really tries, and certainly I uh, do appreciate the uh, the comments and feedback over over the years. 
But sometimes yeah, I get confused. <laughs> yeah, that one I can't piece together. Uh, I, I, I suppose, you know, the ghost is a Nosferatu because of all the lines in the seat the ghost spreads out. So obviously, you know, you have to be afraid of the ghost rivaling the Nosferatu of its spying and obfuscating capabilities, right? Oh! No, I'm more afraid of the ghost because it's apparently part Malkavian and part uh, Ravnos. It's got powers that scare him. You you can trust neither its presentation nor its motivations, because it's a monster. But can you really trust any of us? I can trust you guys more than a ghost, because you guys, as far as I know, can't completely change your apparent identity at a moment's notice. Give Marcus a few weeks. He'll to help. He'll, 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 he'll learn some things. Yeah, uh, uh, Joseph will argue that point that uh, hey, we both can kind of do that. Not not very well, not as well, but that that's kind of one of our things. Plus, um, if you're you're comparing uh, uh, who you can trust, um, and, uh, go, yes. Ghost, as far as I'm aware, hasn't chucked someone to the hell. So, just just saying, just saying. It started by breaking uh, people's minds, so. It kind of did. She she advan oops sorry she advanced his mind. <laughs> she, she trapped him in a hallucinatory nightmare of all of the worst parts of his life and unlife. And he's still there. <laughs> I'm still back in Nam with co so, cocaine yeah, running I at would, me or what heroin or something. I would say that that fucking dead monstrous being did send one of our close allies to hell. She only allowed him to see what was already there in his mind. Yeah, and the necromancer only allowed her to see what was only there on the other side. 